You've seen if statements and now loops, but Swift has another type of flow control called switch case. It's easiest to think of this as an advanced form of if, because you can have lots of matches and Swift will execute the right one. In the most basic form of a switch case, you tell Swift what variable you want to check, then provide a list of possible cases for that variable. Swift will find the first case that matches your variable, then run its block of code. When that block finishes, Swift exits the whole switch case block. Here's a basic example. Let live albums equals two. Switch live albums, case zero, print, you're just starting out. Then case one, print, you just released uh, iTunes live from Soho. Case two, print, you just released Speak Now World Tour. And then default, we're going to say print, have you, oops, in quotes of course, have you done something new. Now we could very well have written that using lots of if and else if blocks, but this way is clearer and that's important. One advantage to switch case is that Swift will ensure your cases are exhaustive. That is, if there's a possibility of your variable having a value you don't check for, Xcode will refuse to build your app. In situations where the values are effectively open-ended, like our live albums integer, you need to use a default case to catch these potential values. Yes, even if you know your data can only fall within a certain range, Swift wants to be absolutely sure. Swift can apply some evaluation to your case statements in order to match against variables. For example, if you want to check for a range of possible values, you could use the closed range operator like this. We could say, right, for case zero, we'll use case zero through one inclusive, you're just starting out. Or for case, we'll do case two through three, we'll print out instead, uh, you're a rising star. Then for four through five, we'll print out, uh, you are world famous. You're world famous. And everything else, have you done something new? One thing you should know is that switch case blocks in Swift don't fall through like you do in some other languages you might have seen. If you're used to using break in your case blocks, you should know this isn't needed in Swift. Instead, you use the fall through keyword to make one case fall into the next. It's effectively the opposite. Of course, if you have no idea what any of this means, that's even better. Don't worry about it.